Hello everybody, this is Stephen Allison and uh, today I want to talk to you about something which I think the club might be planning. Um, I see where the club have left the door open and haven't done anything about it and th that place they've left the door open is the under 18s manager. Now Paul McGuinness was relieved of his duties a few months back and since has not been replaced um, only by temporary management uh, from within the club. So, what I think is about to happen is, this is coming on the back of the Jose Mourinho news that was the worst kept secret in football, as we've been saying, that it was always going to be coming in June. So, Sky Italia dropped some stuff last night, which seemed to get everybody into a frenzy. This is just on the back of like the contract leak, the love letter to United, the Inter Milan president saying he's going to Manchester, the fact that he said he wants to stay in England, there's no other top clubs in England looking for management. Think about it. Um, Jose Mourinho, June, it's as good as done. So, um, what happens now? Lou Van Gaal, what happens to him? Um, now, I like the idea of this Bertra fella coming in as a sporting director, but I wouldn't be against the idea of Lou Van Gaal being retained as a sporting director. I think he's a visionary. I think he's um, got a lot of attributes which allow him to... Um, progress a club going forward. We've seen that at Bayern Munich, we've seen that at Barcelona, we've seen that at Ajax, we've seen that as at Altmar. Um, we've also, to some extent, seen that with the Netherlands and at Manchester United. The problem with Louis van Gaal is that he's got an abrasive personality and uh, I think that ultimately rubs people up the wrong way. Um, and that's happened at every single club that he's been at. He ends up getting sacked because he pisses the press off, he pisses the fans off, and he pisses the players off, and he pisses members of the board off, and they're the ones who are going to ultimately get you sacked. Um, his results have not been that bad at any of the clubs. He's underperformed this season with Manchester United. I think there's occasional mitigating factors, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, I do think that as a director of football, not involved with the day-to-day -day running, he might be a very useful character. Uh, given the choice of him or this dude Bertra, I'd probably go with Bertra. But I also do think that um, if we don't get Bertra and we get Louis van Gaal, well, he's better than Woodward being in charge of uh, transfers and things like that. So that's my thoughts on that. So I could I could see Louis van Gaal being moved upstairs, Jose Mourinho coming in, taking hold of the manager's chair. Uh, Nicky Butt has just been placed as the director of the academy. Warren Joyce doing what he's done for the last 10 years at the club just being a phenomenal under 21 coach when you speak to some of the players um, I won't tell you the player but I'll tell you I won't tell you the, the youth player that uh, we was discussing but I was speaking to Clayton Blackmore about a particular youth player who's not really been living up to expectations and um, Clayton's exact words was he needs to go and spend some time with Warren Joyce and he needs pain um, w with a laugh going on and uh, I, I like the idea that Warren Joyce is seen as this character that just takes no shit I mean it can be minus three there was some there were some nights at Lee Sports Village when we was going watching the under 21s where it was a three bovril night that's how cold it was three bovrils you, you're just taking a bovril just to hold it and keep your hands sort of movable because it was that cold Warren Joyce is standing down there wearing shorts zero fucks given not bothered whatsoever. Shorts, that's what I wear. It's from Oldham. They're a different breed. So, I like the idea of Warren Joyce being this gatekeeper to the first team. Just this ultimate, no-nonsense hard man that demands everything from respect to 100% commitment and determination from his players and quite often gets it and is very successful in what can only be described as one of the most difficult jobs in football. Manchester United under-21 coach, you think, oh, I've got all the riches in the world, I've got the occasional first-team player to call on, I've got all these incredible youth players coming through, but that's not the case, because you know what happens? The first-team call upon some of your best players, because they don't set the worst players in your team, do they? they're only cherry-picking the absolute very best players, and the first-team comes first. So if a player is going to sit on the first-team bench and do nothing, well, you can't have him because he's going to sit on the first team bench and do nothing on the off chance that he comes in because that's how the club works. And you only get the cast-offs from the first team or players that you might get told, you might have a plan in your head for a certain team, you might get told this left winger or this right winger or this centre mid needs 60 minutes, he's got to play. So that might mess your plans up. And you've also got to look towards your best senior under 21, 20, 20-year-old 20, players, 20, 19-year-old players going out on loan 
because they need that first team experience to develop their careers. So I was on the face of things, being the under twenty one manager at Manchester United, you're like what a cushy job is very little pressure on you. Uh, you, you know, you, you're surrounded by all these world class players. What an absolute dream job that must be. But I, I don't think it's a dream job. As much as I think it's a great job, I think it's a nightmare of a job to to be able to do it and do it well. And Warren Joyce does it absolutely fantastically. He he finishes as champions more than he finishes as not as champions in those circumstances where he's got all of his best players out on loan. We have an unreal number of players go out on loan that are unavailable for his selection. We have a lot of players get brought into the first team or released. You know, so this season he's heavily relied on a lot of the under 18s like Tuan Zebe, Rochelle Williams. Rashford only came in and did a couple of games, so like that people think oh Rashford was taken. No, Rashford wasn't taken. Rashford went basically from the 18s to the first team and pretty much skipped out Warren Joyce's influence. Um so I, I would love Warren Joyce to be retained in his position as the under-21 manager. But we haven't got an under-18s manager. Fellas that have come in to back end of the season have done well. They've improved on what Paul McGuinness was doing. And now that might be on the back of a couple of standout performers coming into the team more regular. Angel Gomez wasn't playing regular at the start of the season in the under-18s. Uh, much to a lot of people's bafflement. If you saw the video that I threw out on Twitter last night... If you've not, go see it. If you did, then you'll know what I'm talking about because the guy is unbelievably talented. And there's also another lad, another 16s lad. There's a couple actually, Indy Boone and Adi Barlow, both sort of breaking into the under 18s because the under 21s and the first team have taken some of the under 18s players and they've dragged them up into the first team, they've dragged them up into the 21s and they've left a bit of a vacuum. I think one of the reasons why Paul McGuinness was let go as the under 18s boss is because he was not giving out as many scholarships as perhaps we needed to be given and there was a there was a thin squad now this is evident right throughout the team isn't it really the the first team's thin the under 21s is thin and that might be um, a consequence of the glazers refusing to invest in stuff i don't know we're just looking from the outside in that they're that thin squads all over the place i'd be very surprised if it's managers deciding they want a thin squad i think managers want as many options as possible I do think it probably is down as a consequence of the Glazers. But the things that I'm hearing is that Paul McGuinness didn't give scholarships that probably should have given to some 16, 17, 18-year-olds. Paul McGuinness did a fantastic job. This is no bad mouthing of Paul McGuinness. He did a fantastic job, but there was the feel that there was a change needed. Um, and, and I don't agree that the results should have really affected it. Because if, if you watch the under-18s like I do, there was nobody standing going, this is just dreadful. These players aren't progressing. You were saying, oh, I don't know, it was unlucky today. And you can it's not about winning stuff. Who gives a shit if you win every single under-18s title and never bring a first-team player through? It's not about that. It's about bringing through first-team players, and we do that. That can't be denied. So I wasn't asked about the results. It's nice to win stuff, obviously, and you want to inbred that competitiveness into players, but it's not about the winning. It's about the development. And we was doing that. And as I said, towards back in the this season, we saw a lot of the under-16s drafted into the under-18 side. And they started to turn the results around, in, in all fairness. Uh, so we ended the season on a relative high after the way it had gone. But we still don't have a permanent manager. Now, the clamour for Ryan Giggs to be the first-team manager at Manchester United has been a largely romantic one. And uh, Sam made a great point on one of the full-time Devil shows that we did, that football is romantic inherently. So maybe we should just go for the romantic option. And half of me agrees, but the pragmatic side of me says that it's not about being romantic. It's about minimising risk in a lot of places. And sometimes that's that's not where you get the romance from football, is it, by minimising risk. But we've had two failed appointments, you'd have to say. So this next appointment can't be another failed appointment because then you've started a pattern going. Three becomes four, becomes eight becomes 10 and that is when you are in danger of becoming Liverpool if you look at Chelsea Chelsea have had relatively good success in the last 10 or so years since their first Mourinho stint but they've never had sustained success because they're so fast on firing their manager I'd say Chelsea have underperformed in that era because they're so fast and they burn through that many managers that once Conte gets sacked, which, you know, let's face it, if I'm a betting man, I'm saying he's not seen two years out just on a track record that Roman Abramovich has got and just of how difficult the Premier League's going to be going forward and the position that they're starting in despite having a great squad. 
he's going to underperform in Roman Abramovich's eyes. So he'll be out the door in two years' time. I bet Chelsea replace their manager before United replace ours next, even if that is Mourinho coming in. And that's an indictment on Chelsea. And where did he go then? They've burnt through that many managers. They've given nobody any patience. And you're talking some absolutely fantastic managers. Ancelotti, Big Phil Scolari, Mourinho. Uh, even the lesser ones like Villas Boas and Roberto Martinez. They've not given them any time whatsoever. Hiddink is another one. People who've done stuff and won stuff for them. And they're just so fast to get rid. Now, I, I, I can't argue with them sacking Mourinho this season because of the position they was in. I thought he was going to be sacked a lot earlier. Um, and that's the most patience they've ever so, shown and maybe it was because his contract was so high that they they did that I don't know all the other managers like they, they seem to just sack them like that with no, with no warning whatsoever no build up they're just gone and you're like Jesus Christ I don't know how I'd feel if I was a Chelsea fan I, I don't think I'd enjoy that I don't want to see a massive turnover of managers like that so back to Giggs so Ryan Giggs the clamour for Ryan Giggs is on the back of four games where he had a 50% win ratio. He averaged 1.75 points over those four games, which isn't a long enough sample size to see what he would do over a season. Over a season, 1.75 comes out to about 66 points, I think. So that's that's not winning your league. That might not even be enough for top four. Probably on the border of top four, I think, most seasons. So where, why is there so, clamor, so much clamour of Giggs? Because it is the romantic side. He is the most decorated player in English football. He is a Manchester United legend and probably end up with a statue at Manchester United at some point for his achievements in the game. I only see a managerial position decreasing that. Even if he was as good as Sir Matt Busby, he would be considered a failure at Manchester United. Because if you look at how many titles Busby won and the span that he had in charge, it wasn't that successful by today's standards. He would have to surpass Sir Matt Busby and probably just be just underneath Sir Alex Ferguson to be considered a success. And the chances of that happening are slender, really slender. So Ryan Giggs is only going to diminish his own reputation and his own abilities and his own stature within the club by taking over the club. But it's not just that. I would want the clamour for Giggs to be based on evidence. And I think it's possible to do that. People always refer to Pep Guardiola just taking over Barcelona, but Pep Guardiola did take over the B team. And I mentioned yesterday, I think, or the day before on a video, that Zidane took over Real Madrid and surprised me because he didn't have so much involvement with the B team. He was down as a manager, I think, or as assistant manager of the B team at Real Madrid. But after reading up on it, it turns out that he was there in spirit, but not really the day-to-day -day running of it. And he didn't really do a lot and he didn't seem committed to it. And a lot of people was predicting that he would fail because of that sort of attitude to the B team. But they couldn't be further from the truth. His Real Madrid team looked fantastic. They're scoring goals at will. They're putting teams aside. But when you look at the Real Madrid team on paper, you go, kind of should be doing that. So you can't really use Giggs or Zidane as an example because both of them took over... Sorry, uh, Guardiola or Zidane as an example because they're still entirely different to the circumstances Ryan Giggs finds himself in and Manchester United find themselves in. He could go on and be that successful for us but he could also be an abject failure and I, and I lean towards more the failure side of things because he's been part of two failed regimes and there's nothing about Giggs in interviews or his demeanour or his attitude when he's been sat on the bench that's made you said this guy looks ready to take over he looks almost like he was forced upon Louis van Gaal now both of them have said in interviews that wasn't the case and he wanted Ryan Giggs as part of the coaching staff but he's not going to say anything counter to that while they're still working together, is he? So you just have to look at his demeanour. He doesn't look at Ryan Giggs. He looks at the other guys first, and then he might go to Giggs afterwards. I see very little input from Giggs on the, the bench whenever you see it zoomed in on TV and stuff like that. It doesn't seem like he goes to Giggs first. I don't see Giggs taking charge or anything. The occasional game, I think Middlesbrough at home, Ryan Giggs went and stood on the sideline for 10 minutes. It didn't help anything. But if he was doing that on a regular basis and he was injecting stuff and he was talking to the players, then you might feel excuse me, that he was doing more. I don't get the impression that he's inputting much into what's going on at the club. If he was, I could understand more of a clamour as to why people want him as the next manager. But I'm not getting them impressions. So for me, Ryan Giggs has got to take over the under-18s. It's a vacant position. One of his best friends, Nicky Butt, 
is the academy director. And it might be a bit of case of jobs for the boys, but you know what? If you're going to do jobs for the boys, there's few better than than, than Ryan Giggs. It's hardly just bringing in someone that's completely unqualified. The under-18s is less important, I think, to the under-21s. Because the under-21s is where you really prepare players for the first team. The under-18s is more sort of continual development and maybe just a little bit of sifting. Can players sink or swim a little bit at this level? It's the, it's, unfortunately, it's the first real competitive football a lot of these players are getting because the under-16s is still friendlies and tournaments largely, which is ridiculous. Because you're basically talking about apprentices for professional f- athletes and they're not being competitive. We all know games are competitive, aren't they? But there's no published tables, there's no league fixtures, there's there's no real competitive football at that age. So under-18s is the first step of being competitive, which is arguably why England have perhaps fell behind in the development of footballers. Ryan Giggs could be that first step. Those 18-year-olds are not going to be answering Ryan Giggs back. They're going to respect what he's won. They're going to allow him the time to develop as a coach, to manage a squad to see when players need a rest, to see when players need promoting, to do all of the things that you need to do as a manager without the pressure of needing to win every single game like he would obviously if he took over Manchester United's first team. He's got Warren Joyce who can help him in relation to the development. He's got Nicky Butt as one of his friends working above him. There'd be very little pressure and everybody just wanted him to succeed. And then, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter if the under-18s don't win every game. You just want to see development, and that would allow him to de- develop his own identity as a coach, develop his own style of play as a coach, without pressure, but with some unbelievable kids. Next season for Manchester United, we already know we've started signing the likes of Tahi Chong, Leo Connor, Burke, and a ton of others that I can't even remember the names of. We are going balls to the wall. We are looking at a Galacticos era for the Manchester United under 18s. The club's policy is the best local talent supplemented with the absolute cream of world football and that is what we're doing in the past we've refused to pay agents fees and transfer fees for 16 year olds which i can understand it's a fairly sensible approach because you don't know what's going to happen to a player at 16 years old that's changed in recent years and recent months we are now prepared to pay the agents fees we are now prepared to pay the transfer fees and i think one of the first early indicators of that is timothy fosu mensa i think we paid around about a million for him something along those lines from ajax as a 16 year old he spent about 18 months in our academy now he's in the first team now if we can continue to do that let's look at leo connor the irish lad let's say we we basically stole him from the under the noses of real madrid real madrid was keen on him and we've managed to convince him to come and join United. I think we've had to pay a relatively small fee. I think it's around about 300k, somewhere along those lines. I could be wrong. I can't remember. But I think it's around about 300k for him. Now, if we if he spends two to three years, and then at 18, 19, maybe even just before his 20th birthday, he breaks into the first team, then that's fantastic, isn't it? That's better than spending 20 million. That's a player that's been brought up through the Manchester United way. And it'd be excellent if Ryan Giggs was a coach that was able to be part of that, feeding them in. He's been where these kids have been and he's made the step up into the first team and gone on to win everything you could win as a player. Who better to mentor and guide these 16, 17-year-old talented lads than Ryan Giggs? So for me, Ryan Giggs should be retained because I think once Mourinho comes in, he's going to be out the door. Part of two failed first-team regimes, some shit needs to stick to Ryan Giggs for that. But I think he can redeem himself, get his own managerial career back on track take the under 18s let's see what football you want to play let's see if you do play this Fergie United attacking wing style play let's enjoy what you're able to do with a talented bunch of under 18s let's maybe win the youth cup that you yourself won as a player with this under 18s next year and let's have the clamour for Ryan Giggs to be the manager after Jose Mourinho based on a successful under 18 season with him at the, the helm so that's my little thoughts on that let us know in the comments do you agree do you disagree why what the crack is and all the rest of it so thank you for watching i'll see you soon